One of my passions is exactly this subject, which is uh, trying to maintain, preserve, restore function of joints as opposed to replacing joints. Uh, I, there's a, I just have a lot of curiosity with cartilage and uh, joint mobility and et cetera, et cetera, which you'll hear about. And it's something I'm interested in, it's something I've done research in, and it's, it's a big part of my practice. Uh, basic knee anatomy includes the, the green arrow there are the ligaments in the center of the knee. This is looking at the knee from the front. The kneecap is gone uh, for, the, for the diagram purposes. The cruciate ligaments cross. So this is the anterior cruciate ligaments in the front of the knee and the posterior cruciate ligament in the back of the knee. The cartilage is this glistening surface right here, which I'll we'll show you lots of photos of in a second. Uh, that's more like a Teflon coating in the joint, okay? The meniscus, which are the red arrows here, there's the inner meniscus, medial meniscus, and the lateral meniscus here. This is more of a cushion cartilage. Uh, and then there's the bone, of course, this, the, the substance of the bone that makes up the joint. It's a hinge joint. This is up close of the cartilage. This is looking from the side. You can see this is the bone, and the white layer here is cartilage, like an orange peel on an, on an orange. Uh, the meniscus here, looking from the side, uh, kind of has this bow tie appearance. And here's up close and personal. This is cartilage surface. This is the meniscus right here. The meniscus only has blood supply to the outer one third. So if somebody tears their meniscus in this area right here, we, can't, we could put a stitch in it technically, but it won't heal because it doesn't have great blood supply. Uh, if they tear their meniscus in this area where they have good blood supply, we'll typically try to put stitches in it and get it to heal. The blood supply of the meniscus is, is a lot like my hairline. It, it, uh, it is uh, regressing as you age. So when we're born, the blood supply is way out here and then it comes back this way as we age. So when a person gets a meniscus tear when they're older, there's not a lot of hope to try to repair it to get it to heal. Some of the common, uh, some of the common knee problems that we see, and, and, and again, this talk is really pertaining to joint preservation and restoration, so we're gonna focus on the knee, but many of these uh, subjects we're gonna talk about as far as cartilage uh, apply to all of the joints in the body. So kind of keep that in mind, but in particular in the knee, uh, some common things we, excuse me, some common things we uh, run into as far as uh, problems or ligament ruptures. This, this uh, soccer player is injuring one of his, uh, or a couple of his ligaments right there in his knee. Uh, meniscus tears, patellofemoral pain, that's the kneecap and underneath the kneecap, uh, and then cartilage lesions and arthritis. The root of arthritis, arth, A-R-T-H-R, is uh, Latin, means joined to bring together, and itis is disease or inflammation. So when a person comes in and they say, I was told I have arthritis, it's true most of the time. That's why they're there to see us. Now we have to figure out why they have joint inflammation. Uh, there's multiple reasons that they might have it. For instance, this person has actual wear and tear of their cartilage, but they might have joint inflammation because for, for many other reasons. So if you come into the office, we're gonna of course take lots of questions and uh, try to figure out what's going on. Uh, for a knee particularly, we're gonna look for decreased range of motion, areas of tenderness, swelling. Uh, we're gonna ask you if you have pain at rest uh, or if it's increased with weight bearing. The answers to those questions kind of help uh, lead us to the, to the proper diagnosis. We may ask you if you have catching or giving way or you may tell us you have catching and giving way. Or you may say, gosh, I, every, this one position, I feel like there's an ice pick stabbing in my knee. Uh, sometimes that's the way it goes. Uh, we'll do an exam such as this. We'll, uh, we'll take a look at you when you're standing. This gentleman here is particularly bow-legged, which is not a major problem. It doesn't cause pathology. But if something starts breaking down in the joint, like this gentleman right here, if the cushion cartilage is breaking down, now, because he's bearing all of his weight through the inner part of his knee, this is gonna accelerate the, the breaking down on the inside of his knee as opposed to the outside of the knee. So that's, that's the medial compartment, the inner compartment of the knee for somebody who, when they, when they bear weight, bear almost all their weight on the inside of their knee. We're gonna talk about that. Uh, meniscus tear. So here's, here's a, a photo of the meniscus from, from the top. You see how they're kind of C-shaped gasket of tissue. That's the cushion cartilage. And here's what it looks like in, via arthroscopy when it's torn. Uh, it may or may not be associated with trauma. 
Uh, the pain is usually fairly well localized right along the joint line uh, where the meniscus is. It may be popping or cracking, and, and especially with deep squatting or rotation. Uh, physical examination is also going to uh, be similar to the arthritis exam where there's joint line tenderness. There, there will be swelling. Uh, forgive the picture there. I couldn't pass it up. Um, and I showed that to my wife and she says, what's that for? I said, swelling, honey. So she says, oh. So it didn't, didn't go very well. So there are some specialized tests we do for meniscus tears, uh, such as this old picture here di diagramming. What we're doing there is we're putting compression through the knee and we're twisting, and that does cause that zinger of pain sometimes. So if you have a meniscus tear. So we have all, type, all types of uh, knee examination technique. This particular part of the talk, we're going to focus on cartilage. We really need to protect that cartilage, that Teflon coating, because when that starts going south, the whole knee starts going south. So we really want to protect it. We don't want it to get injured. We want to preserve it. And if it's injured, we'd like to try to figure out a way to restore it and repair it. So that's what all this is about. So the dilemma is cartilage. This is cartilage underneath the kneecap here. It doesn't look very good. That's what that looks like there. Uh, does not have a capacity to heal on its own. So the question is, uh, you know, joint preservation and restoration, uh, really, can we, can we do this? I mean, cartilage is an amazingly humbling structure. This is a close-up view of articular cartilage. It's, it's actually a, kind of a miracle structure. It's like a sponge. This is the surface of that Teflon coating all the way down to bone right here. And we are trying to reproduce this, and nobody's figured it out exactly yet. And that's, this is the holy grail, if you will, of uh, what I'm interested in and what most of us are interested in. If we could keep this from falling apart, there wouldn't be such a thing as joint replacements. And there wouldn't be much pain. So what do we have kind of in our armamentarium? Well, again, we're looking, we're trying to do non-operative and also operative protection of the cartilage, okay, and the meniscus right here. So cartilage protection is our goal. And if we have to, we're gonna do cartilage restoration. Fibrocartilage, you're gonna hear that term is kind of a scar cartilage. That's, this is a histologic slide of disorganized. You see how kind of disorganized it is and the surface of it's a little bit undulating as opposed to that perfect normal cartilage right there. And this is a stain that shows normal cartilage. Fibrocartilage is what we produce when we do a lot of our cartilage procedures like microfracture and such. It's as if you took a piece of gum and put it into the area and it's kind of like scar cartilage. If you've ever had a deep gash in your elbow from uh, a bad fall you took, and you know that you have a scar there for life, and the, but the tissue's sensitive and it's not quite as good. It takes many years for that skin to be normal again. That's the way scar cartilage is. It, it fills the gap quite well. It's pothole filler. It's not quite, it's not normal cartilage though. Remember we're talking about our goal is if we can get by, if we can get by with fiber cartilage, fine, but really we want this hyaline cartilage, which is the normal stuff. So we're chasing that holy grail for cartilage. So for cartilage protection, can we really delay and minimize degeneration and pain, avoid the dismal fate of traumatized articular cartilage? Delivery has been challenging, but uh, there's probably some hope. So what we did was we went and looked at all the literature, everything that's out there in the research for cartilage and joint protection. And we put it all together in, in a summarized uh, form, and we presented this at one of the uh, official American Academy of Orthopedic Surgery uh, talks last year. So this was... This up to the minute information. So this is what we know that really works. It's very valid information. The question is, somebody's gonna ask me when they come in, what about a brace? Uh, my doctor said I should get a brace. Well, it depends on the situation. But if you're out of alignment, if you're that bow-legged patient and you're bearing all your weight on the inside, this is the right knee looking on the inside part of the knee, and you wear a brace that takes pressure off the inside of your knee, it actually does help. There's, there's evidence in the, in the literature that says it helps. So unloading braces uh, potentially can be very helpful to minimize discomfort. It doesn't seem to slow the, progr the progress of the wear down, but it helps with pain relief. So unloading braces, one of the tools in our toolbox. Okay, Strengthening, this is something we can all do. So this is something that's going to be probably part of your program, a strengthening program. It doesn't need to be you know, doing heavy squats, but there's all kinds of strengthening programs. We're so closely associated with this uh, Accelerate Sports Institute, and of course our physical therapists and any of your trainers, but we want to have strengthening as part of your program, and it does help a lot. If you take the same bad-looking x-ray on one patient and they don't have very good strength around their knee, 
and you take and, and you take a patient that has the same x-ray and they have good strength of the quadriceps and hamstrings around their knee, the patient has better strength will have less discomfort. That's what we know from the literature. Um, and this is another example of the unloading brace and what it does. It takes the weight off of one side of the knee. Well, so we've got those two things in our toolbox that we could use. What about oral supplements? We've heard all kinds of things about all this magic pills that you should take. Um, the, the, the summary is you're going to read a lot of information on all kinds of things. The only thing I can tell you that we know works to decrease pain as a pill is glucosamine chondroitin. There's lots of brand names for this. and We've actually done a Stebbin Hawkins Clinic at Vail, did an independent lab test because supplements are a multi-billion dollar industry in our, in our country. They're not regulated by the FDA. So companies can put whatever they want into these things and you don't know exactly what you're getting. So we tested some, some of these uh, drugs that you take over the counter kind of drugs that you can get at Walmart and other places. And uh, we, we came up with a short list of ones that we recommend, which we let people know when they come to the office. But glucosamine chondroitin, what I tell patients is it works great for dogs, great for horses, and it works for some people. <laughs> we don't exactly know why it works, but there's a, there's a black box there, but it works. It's analogous to uh, a bald man taking hair pills, but actually having the pill be made out of hair. Now, in, grow, in trying to grow hair, okay? That doesn't make a lot of sense. Glucosamine and chondroitin are building blocks of the cartilage. Remember that structure I showed you of cartilage? Glucosamine and chondroitin are basically proteins in the cartilage. So we think, well, we take that by mouth, it goes into our system, somehow that does something. The reality is it does. For people that have moderate to severe osteoarthritis, there's all kinds of studies that are showing us now, it seems to decrease their pain but it doesn't seem to change the rate that their cartilage wears down, but it decreases their pain. So in some form or another, it acts as a pain reliever. It doesn't seem to have any side effects other than $15 a month over the counter. That's the only one I can recommend to you of all the supplements that are out there that you're gonna read about. And these are just some examples, DMSO, MSM, seaweed. You're gonna read about all kinds of things, the miracle pills. This is the only one that actually has good literature behind it that says it helps. So what about now something a little bit more invasive, the injectables, the injectables that we do. Something called hyaluronic acid, all right? Uh, you'll hear these by all kinds of brand names. I won't say any of the brand names now, but there's about five or six brand names out there. Essentially, it's hyaluronic acid is to tissue as puffs and Kleenex is to the other, is the brand names. They're very similar. They do have di different formulations, but basically what it is, hyaluronic acid is a, is a molecule that you inject into the joint. When you inject it into the joint, its design is to induce the, the joint lining, the cells in the joint lining called the synovial cells, which are in charge of making joint fluid. Once we introduce that molecule into the joint, these, the medicine induces the cells in the joint lining to make a higher viscosity joint fluid, okay? Higher viscosity joint fluid to buffer your rough cartilage might diminish the particle debris, might diminish your pain. So that's what the, that's, that's, that's the thought process. And the only debate about these injections are what size molecules should you inject? And that's why there's all the different brands. And they'll, the, one talks about this is better, this is pure, this is whatever, but that's what the argument about. Nobody's arguing that it works or not. They only argue about what type of uh, molecular structure should you inject and how often should you inject it. Say we're treating something that doesn't require surgery but yet you just need to have less pain so you can do the proper exercises. You need to have a pain-free window. So we give a cortisone shot just so you can do the exercises and then the exercises will carry the rest of the way. So that's how patients say, well, I had a cortisone shot. I, I never had a problem for five years. Well, the cortisone was got, gone in about four to six weeks. The cortisone just allowed them to get around that window of pain and then exercise their way through it. So cortisone plus hyaluronic acid seems to help a great deal. Uh, that th those two together seem to help a great deal. So when we do these injections, right now insurance companies will only allow us to do the visco supplementation injections every six months, typically, and we always try to try to bump it up there a little quicker because my, in my experience these last about four to five months. Patients are calling around the fourth or fifth month saying I'd really like to get in and get that next injection, and then the insurance company won't won't allow it. So we have to do studies to show that it works, which is what we're doing right now. Uh, to show that these things work a great deal. So we do, the, we do the visco supplementation for patients that have arthritis. We also do it after arthroscopy, which is one of the studies we're doing right now.